Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Tammy Manis, and Morris Ross here with us on the show on this Friday. Delighted to have your company. Don't forget, you can like and share our Facebook page and the programme itself. You'll get all the unique content and the up-to-date news on our Facebook page and on YouTube as well. You'll get the show and notifications if you hit that subscribe button. Delighted that you're with us. Lots to talk about. Let's cut to the chase straight away. We will deal with the uh, suggestion and allegation of racism at the end of the Rangers Slavia Prague game. That's coming up. There are various statements and comments from the Rangers manager. You can give us your view on it as well. But first and foremost to the game itself, Ruffy, uh, in the end, Slavia Prague uh, did exactly what we feared they would do away from home. They have a good record away from home. And in the end, um, they were just that bit better than Rangers. Yeah, I think on the night, I think uh, I think Rangers were surprised with the change of their formation for the 4-3-3. Uh, it took them a wee while to get uh, that sorted out. But as the game progressed, I think we saw that technically they were very, very good. We, we knew what they were like away from home, you know, and uh, last night was no difference. I think the unfortunate thing for Rangers were that the big players that we spoke about, the Aribos, the Camaras, Morelos, you know, they just never turned up on the night. Not, not with the way the form that they had been doing. And that was a disappointing thing, I think. Uh, and obviously the things that happened later on, going down to 10 men, didn't help things at all because you're always liable to, to nick a goal at one nothing. So, and in general, the whole the whole night just panned out to, to be a, a bad night for Rangers. Uh, Rangers certainly were at their best on the left flank, Morris, but technically this was a Slavia Prague side, good on the ball, um, and and the press that they forced Rangers into mistakes in possession at times, you know, in the end, um, they get caught out. I think over the two legs, I think the, the best team are certainly went through, um, I think... It was. I just felt it was such an anticlimax last night. Um, I was expecting Rangers to, to to be all guns blazing, um, and it was just Rangers kind of went out and went a whimper. It was. It wasn't like Rangers, um, but I think you've got to give credit to them. They're, they're very very good side, and you don't put Leicester City um, if you're not a decent outfit. Um, but yeah, I, I just felt Rangers look like they've lost a bit of edge. I hope that um, returns for for obviously the game coming up on Sunday. But I think. All okay, credit must go to Slavia Prague for the way they, they, the way they handled the, the two the two legs. Uh, and the goals themselves, Tam, um, we've been very, very complimentary towards Alan McGregor. Do you think he'll be kicking himself with uh, his reaction to the first goal, or was that just that he saw it late, couldn't do anything about it? I think with Alan McGregor, Peter, you're, you're expecting him to save them. He, he saved them all season in big games and big moments. and. <laughs> You know, it was kind of at him. I know he's, it's a good header for the boy, uh, but it's, it's kind of down at a good, a good angle for Alan. And Alan would disappoint he's not saved it. And I think once that goal goes in, Rangers are chasing the game. And I, and I agree with more. It was a bit of a whimper. They didn't come out, you know, and really go at it, it's Slavia Prague. And I feel as if it just drifted away over the two games. I, I do feel that the best team has went through, but I think Rangers have lost a little bit of intensity since they've won the league. I think that's been evident in the two games against Slavia Prague. But how how good are Slavia Prague? We we don't know. You know they're going to go obviously into the next round, and we'll see how they go on. But to beat Leicester uh, home, no, put them out home and away in two legs, and then Rangers as well. So they're a, they're a really good side. But Rangers will be disappointed over the two games the way they performed. It, it just wasn't the Rangers that we've seen uh, under Stephen Gerrard in Europe. Yeah, I think all this week we expected Rangers just to maybe sneak it. But as Morris mentioned there, Ruffy, they weren't at it. The, the other thing about it is it became more and more frustrating as they're obviously desperately trying to create something <laughs> in the match. that You can't get away from the red cards. I mean, 10 stitches in the goalkeeper's face. It was a bad one. And I don't think anybody, Ruffy, has any argument with the red. No, I think both, both uh, decisions were right. Uh, I think the first goal was the important one. Uh, whoever got that first goal, I think, was going to go through. You know, obviously, with them getting it, you know, it puts the Rangers not on a back back foot, but you're, you're saying to yourself, go, we charge forward here and lose another one. We're out of this. So that's when they started being a wee bit cagey and, and looking for somebody to come up with the goods. But no, I think once the, the first sending off, you know, that it just fell into their, their hands. You know, they were very comfortable on the ball and 
the free kick is just, it's a Champions League goal. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, I mean, he gave an indication of his quality in the first leg, Stanchu, and uh, he delivered an absolute quality finish for the, the, the goal that eventually kills Rangers off. Now to the incident. This is what uh, Stuart Robertson had to say with regards to the uh, uh, conduct of the Slavia Prague player, because clearly he covers his mouth uh, and then whispers something into Glenn Kamara's uh, ear, which incensed him. Uh, the racist abuse suffered by Glenn Kamara will not be tolerated by Rangers. As a club, we stand resolutely behind Glenn as we support him and his teammates. We stand behind each and every one of our players, regardless of race, religion, colour or creed. Several of our players have subs subsequently received racist, threatening and sickening abuse online. This is abhorrent and highlights the responsibility social media outlets have in eradicating abuse from faceless cowards. We refuse to acknowledge any attempt to defend, deflect or deny the abuse Glenn Kamara <laughs> experienced last night. Steven Gerrard has already underlined his own disgust at this incident and support for our players. And he goes on to say, UEFA will be well aware the football world is watching. We expect a robust and unequivocal response. It cannot be merely swept under the carpet. We're not prepared for Glenn Kamara to be another statistic. Enough is enough. Uh, now, Morris, down to nine men, couple of minutes to go. I cannot work out any incentive for Glenn Kamara to make it up. He's a thoroughly decent lad, quiet. You never hear a peep out of him. Why would a player do that unless somebody said something really offensive? There's no chance that the Glenn Kamara is making this up. I think when you, the moment that the guy whispers in his ear or shouts in his ear, whatever he's done, you can see the reaction instantaneous. It was, it set him off. Now that, that's not something that that's that's premeditated from from Glenn Kamara. No chance. Um, this this is horrible, um, and and I'm glad that Rangers are, are, are standing by the lad. Um, Kamara is not a troublemaker. He's a he's a genuine nice man. Um, but this is a societal issue. It's not just football, and I, I think this. Yeah, there's racism in football. There's racism everywhere. Um, so th there needs to be a realignment of the. I think that needs to start at school level uh, in educating children that this is unacceptable behaviour, <laughs> and hopefully, no, this generation, next generation, and the generations to follow, it will be a better place to for, for everyone to you know, to live basically. Yeah, I echo those sentiments and because I've been an ambassador for show racism, uh, the red card, I think time and again I um, see the great work uh, done by Derek Ferguson, um, Mickey Weir uh, and that organisation in Scotland is not as well funded as it should be. If anything, the best work is done with the kids throughout the schools. They go through the schools. What I would say is that there needs to be um, an education, Tam, I think Morris has hit the nail on the head. There needs to be an education. There needs to be an understanding. We all accept everybody have, you know, has a, a, a difference. There are differences in society, human nature, you know, what we believe in. Um, everybody has to, I think, be educated on understanding each other's differences and accepting them. And, and there is a real problem with that. And it's not just, uh, you know, racism. It's bigotry, it's sectarianism. We have that poison in our country. That's where I think the education needs to be more committed. Yeah, Peter, it needs to start from the schools. It needs to start from, from parents. I mean, we, we understand we live in the west of Scotland, you know, and bigotry is rife here. It has been for, for a number of years. And uh, until parents educate their kids and kids are educated at schools, then it's just going to keep going. And in terms of last night, for me, it's, you know, UEFA have got to send out a strong message. I would, I would throw them out. I would throw them out of the UEFA League, uh, Europa League. Uh, if that is, is, you know, I, I don't think he's made it up. I agree with Morris Ross. I don't, he's not made it up. So I would throw them out. I wouldn't have put Rangers back in. I'd just give the next team a bye, however they get drawn against. But I, I just think there's got to be a message, a stronger message. It can't just be a fine and slap in the wrist. It would happen with PSG against, uh, against <laughs> the Turkish team in the, in the Champions League, where it happened. And again, they were fined. So I think they've got to send a stronger message. And that, that for me, is, is throw them out of the Europa League. Well, um, you can tell Stephen Gerrard was incensed by it. Um, he clearly didn't like the fact that uh, there was a suggestion that the Rangers staff and players were liars. 
the game's done in terms of the results at the time. We've got nine men that tune it up. There's absolutely no need for it. And the disappointing thing for me is there's people trying to defend the opposition player. Their people trying to defend it, trying to defend him, calling those liars and this, that and the other. But look, that's for other people to deal with. All I can say now is I'll stand by Glenn Kamara 100%. Uh, no surprise there. Um, I think a lot of the Rangers players on the night um, realised uh, the enormity of what was unfolding and they were standing by him as well. Uh, this is a statement that's come out. Now, I'm going to paraphrase certain language that's been used by Slavia Prague, but this is their statement coming out with regards to their captain, Andre Kijula. Uh, Slavia resolutely denies the disgusting accusation of one of the team captains, Andre Kijula, of racist behaviour after one of the brutal files, Andre Kijula spoke to one of the Rangers players. I told him, you effing guy. It was said in emotions, uh, but I absolutely deny there was anything racist in these words, Kijela stated. Uh, Slavia players faced an unprecedentedly malicious play from their opponents. They've never experienced such play in any game in modern history. Uh, many brutal tackles resulted in the injuries of our players. Uh, goalkeeper Andre Kolyaf uh, was taken to hospital with 10 stitches on his head. After the game, the team was not allowed to enter the dressing room. Andre Kajela was assaulted by Kamara and hit in the head with his fist, while Rangers <coughs> manager Stephen Gerrard witnessed the incident. Even the UEFA representatives who were also present on the site of the incident were shocked. Now, claim and counterclaim always ensues in these things, Morris. The one thing, rather than it getting overly emotional that I would say about these situations, is um, we can only give our opinion but the overall assessment has to come from UEFA once they have as much of the evidence in front of them as possible. You know, Slavia Prague can come out with statements talking about the brutality. Rangers will obviously face criticism for the conduct of some of their players with regards to red cards, but that's part and parcel of the game. This incident, I am wondering how they're going to deal with it and how you prove innocence or guilt. It's a difficult one. It really is a difficult one um, because it's ultimately it's his their word against um, Glenn Kamara's word. Um, but there's no smoke without fire here. Um, I, I don't like it. I think their statement is very calculated. Um, they're, they're, I think they're, they're, they're putting their head in the sand here and um, it's, it's, it's an indictment um of, of where we are here with this racism and uh, for me if, if it, the guy is found guilty of this for me i don't, I don't think that's a slavia prague issue i think that's an individual who's <laughs> if it is racism um then he should be punished and should not be allowed to play in europe that would be for me when an individual behaves like that the individual should be punished um finding the club that's not going to make an issue for me, that's not going to make enough uh, of a, a point of this. The, the individual must be banned from playing in Europe. If this is where he's going to behave, ban the boy, ban the individual. Yeah, and backing up what you were saying earlier, that this is what Stephen Gerrard said today, speaking ahead of obviously the game against Celtic and the Old Firm game on Sunday. Um, this issue, as Morris uh, highlighted earlier, is bigger than football. One thing I'll always be is side by side with all my players to be the biggest support I can be, whether that be for a family reason, uh, an incident like last night or anything else that comes uh, along the way and along the journey. Um, obviously, it, it was a surprise and a shock for, for, for not just me, for everyone connected to this club last night. But what I can say is that I'm really proud that everyone stuck together and showed real solidarity and we've done everything we can. Yeah. Um, now, Ruffy, you were going to say something. I just saying the biggest thing for me is proving it, Peter. You know, it's it's okay one saying one saying this and one saying the other. UEFA have got to look at it and take all sides. It's a really really difficult one, and and I know uh, we can't condone it at all. And if the boy allegedly did it, he, he should be banned. Something should happen to him. But there has been occasions. I think if you cast your mind back to the Michael Gardain with Morales uh, up at Ross County where he was accused of being racist uh, and, and players heard him being racist and he went to a tribunal and get get proved not guilty. 
you know, so it's a really, really difficult one to get evidence out there to prove it's 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 the two players themselves, you know, and but UEFA have to they have to thoroughly examine it and, and get to the bottom of it. Yeah, um, that's the, the tough thing, I think, as Morris mentioned there as well, and, and we're all in agreement. Um, once the evidence is before them, then they have to call it. I, I must admit, my own personal viewpoint on it is that I, I, I wonder what the motivation is for a player to come up with such a statement like that. The game's gone. They know they've been beaten by a better side. Okay, they're down to nine men. But you're, you're looking at the character of a player who is not a confrontational player. What would be the motivation to suddenly make that accusation? I, I, I just cannot see um, anything other than something untoward must have been said to him. But if they can prove it, um, I agree with Morris. I think the player has to suffer. I think the club also has to suffer. But I think we need a stronger stance and, and more from UEFA to show that they are serious about this. Because, you know, the one thing that sometimes I look at and I think to myself, it's just sheer tokenism, is everybody holding up a card. Everybody taking a knee, everybody, you know, showing, uh, you know, that they're behind a certain campaign. But do they go out and conduct their lives properly? Do they actually live by the card that they're holding up, by the knee that they're taking? Are they considering what they're actually backing in their everyday life? Conor Golson today um, is questioning whether people actually do believe in this whole campaign. Yeah, it is, but it never will get eradicated because there's so many token gestures out there. And I'll be honest, taking a knee, token gesture um, from the higher authorities, taking a knee to make it look all like they're doing something to help, but they're not doing anything because when these things happen, there's no, there's no consequence. There might be a fine, but it's never enough. Like, what? Well, yeah, I mean, you can tell he's, he's absolutely exasperated there trying to come up with where do you go with it? You can continually um, put across all these campaigns, Morris, but you need you need something more. There has to be something more guidance, education, a plan in place, and a consequence that clearly states, if you do this, this is what's going to happen to you. Again, I, I think this is a government issue. You know, I think... the. We, we don't want to see it in any walk of life, but the only way it's going to change is by education, and that starts at schools. It's, again, I need to come back to it and say that in, hopefully in two or three generations' time, when the education has started now, we will then see a more inclusive society in 20, 30 years' time. It's not a quick fix, but it needs to start now. And I, I agree with you, there is too much tokenism with, with it holding up a, a card or taking a knee. That doesn't, I think initially, yeah, let's, let's make a point. But what comes after that initial point? There's got to be a plan. There's got to be some form of education that's, 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 that starts at nursery. It starts that early because unless you, if you, if you think about it, you sh you sh show you a boy at seven, I'll show you the man. The, the, the indoctrination started at seven year old. So, you know, you've got to treat people properly in the first seven years of growing up. And then they will then cover a better outlook, a better education, and a better be a better, hopefully be a better human being. Um, but it starts at school level, it starts at nursery level, and it's a government issue. And um, yes, footballers. Uh, sorry, on you go. Well, I was going to say to you, I, I I agree with you. I mean, governments can take action in the sense of putting laws in place and maybe even giving um, you know harsher penalties to people who are found guilty of it. Um, but I think uh, you know whether it's Prague, whether it's you know in the UK or across in other countries in Europe where maybe there's a history of it. Um, um, all of us have a poison that we'd like to be taken out of our society. My real belief, and I hold this true, um, and I hold my hands up as a parent uh, to this, is quite simply, kids, yes, education at school, absolutely, but you are a product of your parents. And the greater responsibility must be with the parents to actually you know, preach to their kids, tell them exactly what they expect of them, give them that lesson passed down, apart from what the teacher says and what the campaigns are and the education you get from school. Parents have a good responsibility and quite a high responsibility in my mind, Morris, to actually educate their kids right and wrong and how to conduct themselves and how to understand people and their differences and not to abuse them. 
Right, but again, I, I, I agree with you 100%, but if you, it's the chicken and the egg here. Because <laughs> if the parents were not educated properly, then they're going to pass on their thoughts and, and, and beliefs to their children. So what I'm trying to say is the education starts now with these three, four, five, six-year-olds. So when in 20 years' time they become parents, the education is that, that they've, they've been programmed properly on how to, to behave in, in a, like an inclusive society. Then their generation of kids will be brought up properly. But the education is going to start now. Then it will hopefully have like a, a knock-on effect further down the line. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to say it's to say it's not a quick fix is an understatement because, quite simply, we are, you know, we are generations down the line of the problems we have in our own society here. Um, and you know, lots of people are still not learning the lessons. Never mind uh, members of the public, people who hold positions in high authority across the world have um, been guilty of it in the last uh, four years, which leaves a lot to be desired. Um, anyway, I don't want to get down a political roadshow on this one. Uh, PFA have got involved. They've just released a statement as well um, from Fraser Wishart, the chief executive. Our members have been taking an in support of the PFA Scotland and show racism, the red card campaign against racism and social injustice across society. Since the start of the season, uh, there was resistance against the action of taking a knee from some quarters and questions over the ongoing value of the gesture, uh, gesture I beg your pardon. If by taking a knee, children ask their parents why the gesture has value. The racist abuse received by Glenn Kamara added to the awful incident earlier this season involving Nir Beaton, uh, Jonathan Afalabi and Alex Dyer. It uh, shows we must continue to fight against uh, the racists that attach themselves to our game. And the final paragraph in this, there are players who have chosen not to take a knee and show their support in other ways. We must respect that that view, not to allow those who are not behind the fight against social injustice to divide those of us that are. And that's the key to all this. Um, lots of people offering their um, own opinions on it on our social media feeds. And I thank you all um, for your opinions on this. I think the general feeling is tremendous sympathy towards um, Glenn Kamara in this incident. Um, so there it is, Rangers. Um, uh, overall, Ruffy, I think when you look at that campaign, I think they'll be happy. Um, I think maybe Stephen Gerrard listening to him in the various interviews would love to have maybe gone one stage further, realising the full potential of what he had available. But it's a great learning curve for them again. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great learning curve for all the players, particularly the younger ones. You know, they have uh, been up for it for every game they've come into. They've been absolutely tremendous. He, he will be disappointed because... This was a game, particularly at home, uh, with the form that they've been shown in Europe. They could have won it, and I'm sure he would have liked to have tested himself uh, in the last day against one of the right big teams. You know, that's what that's what he's there, he's there for. You know, to test himself and the players. So from that aspect, uh, he'll be disappointed. But the the league's in the bag. The Scottish Cup still around the corner. Uh, I would have to say, from previous seasons, this season beats everything. You know, and I think they can be quietly. Uh, content with everything he's done so far this year. Yeah. Um, how impressed have you been with him, Morris? You've been obviously moved into coaching and you've watched the way he structures his side. I think, I think the, way, the, the way the manager is, he's the, he's the lightning rod. He's the, he's the figurehead. I think the, the nuts and bolts um, need to be attributed to, to Michael Beale. Um, Michael's obviously a very talented individual um, who, who's travelled the world and, and earned these stripes. And I think he's he's a massive part of that. I think obviously you've got Gary McAllister in there who is the kind of gel between staff and players. So I, th I think they've got a good staff there. Um, and if you look at, I mean, I think when I look at Rangers squad, I think Celtic squad is actually better, player for player. But I think Rangers are a well-oiled machine. They're coached very, very well, and they're a unit. They're very, well, they're they're a great unit. Their 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 shape is fantastic. They seem to believe in the cause, and um, yeah. But I, I still think moving forward, I, th I think Rangers need to sign another five, six players for next season. 
Uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, we will see what he does to take it on to another level again <laughs> in the summer and how much money he has available. Um, as far as last night and the British clubs involved in the Europa League, Tom, if you have a look at the results from last night, you know even uh, some teams with a budget that would absolutely dwarf anything that Rangers had to spend last night... Um, <sighs> Olympiacos got a 1-0 win at Arsenal. Arsenal go through. Um, the big shock had to be uh, Dynamo Zagreb knocking out Tottenham Hotspur. 3-0. Um, 3-0. Three nothing, three nothing. And then at the end of it, the manager absolutely lacerated his team. Yeah, I, listened, I, I watched that, Peter, before the Rangers game and, and Spurs' attitude was a disgrace. I mean, I think they just thought this was a fixture they were going to go and fulfil. I think they thought the game, the tie was done. And they went over there with a, with a terrible attitude and and fair play to Zagreb, they went right at them from the start and got the goals. And uh, only until it was too late, Spurs actually tried to start playing uh, towards the end of the 90 minutes and then the extra time. But it was too late by then. You know, Zagreb overwhelmed them. And, you know, for a, for a club like Dinamo Zagreb to, to beat Spurs is a, is a massive shock. So I think that obviously piles more pressure on Jose Mourinho. Uh, and the, the Spurs fans would have been looking to go all the way in that tournament. So I think that, uh, that he's, he's under serious pressure now because that squad. The team out last night should be going there and winning that game and that tie comfortably. And they, they got done just by having a very poor attitude. OK, European adventure over for all Scottish clubs for another season. Although the good news, I have to say, Ruffy, is the way this is looking, if, if next season the winner of the uh, Scottish Premiership has a real chance of going straight into uh, the group stages. Now, there's a little permutation here, which is quite simply that if uh, the team who finishes in the big five, which we presume um, are the winners of the Champions League, if they win the Champions League, any of the teams in the big five and still finish in the qualification places, that means that, you know, the Scottish club will get an automatic entry into the to the Champions League group stages, which would be massive. That would be fantastic. I mean, Celtic have been complaining about having to play all these qualifying rounds for, for the last three years, you know, and uh, it's been getting harder and harder to get into the group stages. I mean, once you're in the group stages, the, the amount of money is there for everybody to see. And uh, to, to get right into the group stages would be absolutely fantastic uh, for whoever it is. Uh, and I think a lot of them will be looking at that now uh, when the budgets are being discussed. You know, with the aspect of that lump of money coming in, it just an added a sentence to make sure that you win the league. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, uh, small matter of uh, an old firm game, which some people think ah, it doesn't mean anything. Rangers have won the league, but when has there been an insignificant old firm match that doesn't mean anything? Gabriel Antoniazzi looks ahead to the big one. Rangers arrive at Celtic Park as champions for the first time in a decade. They're aiming to make it four wins in a row in this fixture. They're also hoping to mirror Brendan Rodgers' invincible season and they could also equal the record points haul by winning the match on Sunday. The question is, how will the Jers be affected by Europa League elimination at the hands of Slavia Prague? It's only their second loss in all competitions all campaign, as well as the furore surrounding the alleged racism at Glen Kamara. I don't think you should have to get players up for an old firm. I mean, that should be in your DNA. Um, it's a huge fixture. I think it goes without saying. Um, on the back of the disappointment um, of, of going out of Europe, we want to try and bounce back with a strong performance and a positive result. Um, we'll be ready come kickoff. So Celtic trail the league champions by 20 points, a massive 30 point swing from this stage last campaign. No one saw that coming. The Hoops were the better team in the January fixture, but they have nothing to show for it. They haven't even scored against the Ibrox side all campaign and goals have been a struggle of late. They've only got four in their last five. Interim boss John Kennedy will be number one for the first ever time in this fixture. For us, it's, it's, it's been a marker down, you know, that we've probably underperformed at times this year. So we need to show with the levels uh, that we're capable of. And that, that's purely what we're going at the weekend for us to one win the game and show the level we're capable of and building that again. As ever, with these occasions, much of the build-up will be about a guard of honour or the lack of one. But both teams will aim to do their talking on the park. Celtic will look to show that this is their home stadium and they want to prove that they'll be backfiring next season. What better way to do so than break their rivals' unbeaten run? But right now, despite last night's loss, a peerless Rangers will fancy their chances of winning this again. 
Yeah, um, listen, <laughs> we've been talking about how people should conduct themselves. Um, there's no sporting integrity in Scottish football or anywhere else, I have to tell you. And John Kennedy says there'll be no Guard of Honour, Tom McManus. Um, I think Gary Caldwell was the latest one uh, to call for it. Um, I don't think... Yeah, I think we're a long way away from Guards of Honour. Yeah, listen, I, I, I don't think it was ever going to happen, Peter. You know, maybe in other fixtures and other leagues, but Celtic and Rangers is, is, let's be honest, it's pure hatred. It's it's just one of the ones where they both hate each other. It was never going to happen. Um, and we just got on with the game. I, I, I still fancy Rangers to go win the game. I, I think that Rangers this season have been, have shown that they're a lot stronger uh, unit than Celtic. I think last night's defeat will maybe refocus them uh, to go again. I, I just feel as if they have lost that little bit of intensity, but I think they'll get it back. That'll get the juices going uh, Sunday for that game. So I, I, I do fancy Rangers to go to go to Parkhead and make it three wins out of three over Celtic this season. And I think they'll win two one. Yep, yeah, um, I share your view on that, uh, Tam. I think Rangers, uh, for me, good enough to go there, strut the stuff, prove they're the champions, and win it by two goals to one. Morris, what's your prediction on the big game? I think it will be a draw. Um, I hope you guys are right. I hope Rangers do win it. Um, but I think, well, I've, I've been there before. When you win that league, it's human nature. There's, there's that one percent just comes off you. Um, but listen, it's a, it's a Celtic at Parkhead. You know, it's a, it's always a difficult tie. Um, and you know the, the whole form thing it, it does go out the window it's i think it's going to be down to who really really fancies this um but i think the two teams will cancel each other out tomorrow uh, on sunday and i think it'll be a score draw score draw from morris uh ruffy where's your money on this one yeah i think there's going to be some kind of motivation in that celtic dressing room uh, at the weekend, uh, all the right things have got to be said. Uh, uh, what's been went down in the past, uh, that should be the motivation to get there and, and show everybody that you have got good players. Uh, I think uh, Turnbull, Christie, uh, and McGregor have got energy in there to 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 do that. Uh, but I, I'm a wee bit like Morris. I still don't think they're good enough uh, attacking wise to win the game. So I, I'm going to go for one each as well. Yep, OK. Um, one each, you can give us your view on how you think the game's uh, going to pan out. Uh, opinions, welcome on this one. Some people think it's going to be a draw, sharing the view of Morris and Ruffy. But uh, as ever, it's very difficult to predict. You, you almost sometimes have to wait for that first tackle to go in to sense the desire from one team or another. But uh, we never tire of it. It's something that uh, has a recipe that excites us all. Sunday, join us if you can. Half past ten, we'll be looking over Celtic Park, uh, getting ready for the big one, previewing it. Ruffy will be there with me. Um, hopefully he can get through the Ring of Steel. Um, and uh, basically, we'll be standing there <laughs> uh, looking forward to the game. And then after the game, of course, we'll have a reaction from the managers, uh, possibly around about three o'clock, um, and we'll give you our assessment of the game that unfolded. Join us if you can across YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. We'll be live from half past ten in the morning. Um, now, um, of course, there's been speculation. John Kennedy was talking to you about speculation about Scott Brown possibly heading to Aberdeen. It's one of those jobs that everybody's um, looking at and thinking it's a good job uh, to have. There was speculation that Scott Brown would be part of some kind of management team with uh, Stephen Glass. Uh, this is what John Kennedy had to say on the Celtic captain. Scott's very committed to here. Uh, he's aware of the speculation. There's nothing concrete in that. Um, and I'm sure come the end of the season, whatever Scott decides to do, he'll not be short of offers. You know, he's very much an important player for us, an important captain, and we want to stay that way. Yeah, OK. Uh, interesting. There'll be a lot of people uh, in for that job. Um, again, we'll talk about that a little later in the programme. Uh, as far as uh, some of the players that were out talking today, David Turnbull was talking, Ruffy, about his exclusion from the Scotland squad. This is what he had to say about not being picked. It was disappointing, but um, I just need to kind of work hard now and push and show um, what I can do. And obviously, it's manager's decision, so you, you just need to go on with it and you respect whatever whatever he does. But it'll kind of give me motivation to work harder and kind of try push for a place. Yeah, Morris, you know that player well. Yeah, super talent. Um, good boy. 
Um, I just think it's maybe. I, th- I think Steve Steve Clark's been loyal to the guys that have have, have performed well for him. Um, David is a young lad who I believe will have a fantastic Scotland career. He will play for the next fifteen years for Scotland. Um, super talent, but in this Steve Clark's shape, uh, if you look at the personnel, they're all very very mobile in the midfield area. David is more of a luxury player, if you like. Um, and I think you know David will um, need to kind of be better at that side of the game um, before he's a set to to start for Scotland. But listen, he's got a fantastic career ahead of him, um, and and I wish him all the best. But you know he handled that really maturely the way he responded there. Um, but his time will come, no problem with that. Yeah. Um, uh, listen, just a, a little footnote. We always like to get a good noise up on the programme, Ruffy. Over the uh, last two or three years, we've all had our say on who would get into a Rangers side or a Celtic side. We've argued non-stop with Gabriel's pick of the team of the week. Here's the combined Rangers Celtic 11, Ruffy. Um, <laughs> what, do you, what do you make of it? Do you agree with it? Is there anybody that shouldn't be there? Um... Uh, I mean, uh, in my screen, you know, I can see Kamara Davis. I can't see the other two he's getting there. Uh, I would always have uh, McGregor in there uh, and Edward, obviously. No, I, I, I can't have any defence for the, the back four. I, I, I don't think there's anybody in there. Uh, he's got Ayer in there, which he might just nick in there. But uh, apart from that, you know, it's been all Rangers for me this year. I think the Rangers players that have come in, even the Aribos and the Camaras have, have been super uh, whenever uh, asked upon. And Ryan Kent hasn't had the greatest a season, but he's still a player that will cause you problems. So, you know, I think I think Gabriel's not far away in that one. Yeah. Tom, any argument? No. No, I, I didn't see the striker. Was I take it it was Edward as a striker. I can't Edward, see the ball yeah. on my screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I couldn't really argue with that, with that team uh, overall. I think that a lot of, there's a lot of consistency. I think Conor Golson for me has been the player of the year. I think when you play every game, every minute of every game, you are the first name in the team sheet for Steven Gerrard. He's been consistent. He's kept a number of clean sheets and uh, he's come up with important goals. So for me, Conor Golson, you know, you're looking at McGregor and you're looking at Davis, but Conor Golson has been the standout player for me this season until obviously Tavernier got injured. But for me, Golson has been outstanding. He's played a year for me. Yeah. Who's top man for you, Morris? Um, I think Al McGregor for me. Um, I think he's been sensational. Um, but looking at that, that's that combined eleven. I, I, I wouldn't have Ryan Kent in that, to be honest. Um, I don't think his numbers are strong enough. I think Elianusi would be a better option in there, and I think Morelos has got to be in there as well. So I would have, I would take out Arrivo and um, Kent and have Morelos and Elianusi. I think that would make that team stronger. Yeah, magic is great, isn't it? Everybody, <laughs> we could have two, we could have two, three, four, five different 11s on this one. Uh, always good for a for a pint if we could all actually go out into a pub and have a pint together, but we can't eat. So um, we're just going to have to uh, crack on. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, one other story that was coming out was possibly um, Ustend looking to try and get a permanent deal for Jack Kendry, who's clearly, um, you know, had good performances over there. Whether Celtic decide to let him go or bring him back, he's got one left, one year left on his deal, only time will tell. So, well, given your predictions on the old firm, what about the other fixtures? And there's some tasty ones as well. Um, we'll get to Ruffy on the return of League One and League Two. Um, Dundee United, Aberdeen, Hamilton, St Mirren. Kelly against Motherwell, Livingston Hibbs, St Johnston against Ross County, and there's Celtic versus Rangers. Just before we talk about them, um, Morris, we're delighted that you could join us on uh, today's programme. Um, of course, you were there as part of Stephen Robinson's backroom team. Um, and like everything in life, uh, you know, um, it goes in full cycles. You have one period at a club and then you have to wait for your next opportunity. What would you like to do, you know, in your next move? Um, listen, I think that there's, there's always going to be change. Um, I and I felt it was the, the right time to move from Motherwell. Um, I've made no secret about how much I think of Stephen Robinson as, as, a, as a manager. Um, and if, 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 if the manager got something, um, then then I would follow him. Um, so listen, he 
for me personally, I, I'm, I just enjoy coaching. Um, I think that the management side is something that may come in the future. Um, but for me, I just love being on the grass and, and making a difference <laughs> and, and, and educating footballers. So that's my real passion. So wherever that be, time will tell. Yeah, there are some good jobs that um, are out there at the moment. Of course, the other thing about it, Morris, is quite simply by getting an opportunity, it's to the detriment of someone who uh, gets the sack uh, essentially in the summer. And there could be other jobs coming up. But one that uh, I think Stephen Robinson, we've been talking about him, is the the Aberdeen job. It's such a good job. And I, I don't know how you feel about it, but it's a club that needs, I think, someone with experience and someone that can handle the pressures of not only having a bigger budget, but delivering on it. Yeah, I, I think Aberdeen's budget will come down. I think it has to. Obviously, the special times, the COVID. Um, Stephen Robson would be a perfect fit for, for me. Um, he, I think, is a, a club big enough that he can get his hands around. He... Contrary to to some reports, Stephen Robinson's motherwell of late of the last two years has played some phenomenal football. Gone are the days where he was he's playing diagonals on two big meatheads. That's that's gone. So I think Aberdeen are, Aberdeen are, are, are synonymous with playing good football back in the day, uh, and I think Aberdeen fans would like to see a kind of change in how the, the, how. The, the brand of football that they've been playing. And I think Stephen Robson, if given the opportunity to, to be interviewed, would, would be a fantastic uh, option for Aberdeen. Yeah, absolutely. Here, here. And I, I certainly think if Dave Cormack is doing his work, Tom, he certainly will be in the running. Yeah, we spoke about it many times in this show. I think he'd be on any shortlist. I think that the job he'd done at Motherwell uh, was phenomenal with the budget. I think they were about one and a half million pound their budget. No, for them to finish third is, is phenomenal. And I agree even more. I think when Stephen Robinson first went in, they were a very physical team. They did get it long. Uh, they put balls in the box and they played up to two big strikers. But I think latterly, over the last season, season and a half, he's tried to change the style. And uh, they played a lot of nice football, particularly with David Turnbull in there. So um, I think he'd be a great fit for Aberdeen as well. And I think he will be certainly in the running. And I think he'll be on any shortlist, maybe three or four man shortlist. I think he'll, 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 he should get an interview at the very least. Yeah, uh, I've got to offer my was, apologies to. Go on, Robert. I think if I was Stephen Robertson, I'd be phoning up Sir Alec Ferguson and taking him out for a nice meal and a nice bottle of red <laughs> wine uh, because he's definitely he's definitely going to have something to say in this. Uh, as you've saw in the papers, he's he's there all the time. He's the one that puts the wee nod into the the owners of clubs, so that wouldn't be a bad move. Yeah, listen, I, mean, I think he's been very complimentary towards Derek McInnes and I think his words will hold some sway for clubs who might look at Derek uh, and give him a chance to prove his worth elsewhere as well. Um, I must apologise to Morris because I should have told him earlier that usually if you are coming on the programme, you've got to try and put um, some of your best strips behind you, you know, the big games that you've played in, and then just put them there just to try and uh, brag because Ruffy's obviously got the World Cup games with Zico and uh, Tam has just this never-ending uh, <laughs> framed yeah. shop that he's getting He's getting every strip. I did play about 30 clubs. Yeah, well, absolutely. Every, every day, every day is an eye opener. It's brilliant. Um, was, it, was, there any, was there any of the, any of the clubs you managed to get a jersey that was eleven or under? No, that was that was. Uh, <laughs> I think that was before squad numbers. Were there. That was either that was either twelve, twelve to eighteen. Yeah. What was your What was your favourite Morris uh, strip that you uh, that you cherish and one that you maybe swapped with someone? Do you know what? I wasn't really big on that. I was I've never really. I got a couple. I think I got I got Michael Balak's when we played them against Germany at Hamden. It was Balak number ten, so that was quite a nice strip. And I got Overmars for Holland. Um, and if I'd known at the time, I'd have, I would have probably. By the way, when I was in China, I played against um, Messi, and at half time, we're walking off the pitch. And the referee blew the whistle and was just right next to Messi. I thought, oh, yes, I'm going to get his strip here. So I walked at the same tempo as him. And I touched him and I said, can we change shirts? He just looked at me and just blanked me. Just total blanked as if, you're not getting my strip, me, man. I was devastated. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, I can't believe that is that is the yes. ultimate custard pie yeah. story. Um, but I mean, uh, I was just saying, just like just contempt. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, what about Ross and his walk? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been sensational. And what about? Uh, I mean, there must have been a strip that you played in that you think, ah, I would never give that away. Yeah, and and that's my my first cup final strip. And because Rickson was number two, obviously I played right back. And in the days you played one to eleven um, in the cup final, and um, Jimmy, so I went to number two. I said, Jimmy, where's my strip? Because obviously Rickson, and he said, "Ah, oh, turn around," and he he put me uh, Ross number eight. So that was Gaz's number. You know, I was that was my favourite. When and being Celtic three two and having Gaz's number on your back, you know, I've never been a number eight as you can as you both thought of three. You know, <laughs> it was special. Yeah, absolutely. That is indeed special. Great, uh, great number to have. Um, okay, um, Premiership fixtures, Hamilton, St Mirren. What a game this is going to be. Um, all to play for. And I think Jim Goodwin well happy that destiny is in their own hands. I expect St Johnston to win. It's as simple as that. And um, no disrespect to Ross County, but I know they're fighting for their lives as well. But I do think that St Johnston uh, will beat Ross County on the day. You know, I think St Johnston are one of the form teams in the league. Um, obviously, a great success in the cup. I just don't want my players thinking about what's happening uh, in the St Johnston game whatsoever. You know, we need to go to Hamilton and we need to win. It's as simple as that. Ruffy, that is it. You can't listen to anybody listening to the yeah. Tarani. It's all about just give it your all. Yeah, I think both teams have been given their all. Uh, obviously, Hamilton have got a lot to play for as well. Uh, I think Hamilton with the home advantage uh, and their fighting spirit and their, their knack of getting out of this uh, relegation thing will come through tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to go Hamilton to win 2-1. Oh, that's good. There's a big difference of opinion kicking in here, Tom, for the points. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to go St Mirren to win this one by two goals to one because I just think he, he's done a fantastic job. Even although, Tam, the Saints, a draw would be good enough. Yeah, I think obviously a point, but I think Jim Goodwin's, you know, he's correct there by saying that he's got to expect St Johnson to win the game. You know, St Johnson have got to win to have any chance of getting in the top six. And I, I personally think they win as well. So I think it's important that his players go out and try to win the game. You can't go out and play for a point. You know, you've got to go out and try and win the game. And, I think that that surface will suit some of St Mern's young players, the technical players, and I think they can go there uh, and take advantage of a Hamilton team desperate for points who who probably push for, forward for a winner. We know what Brian Rice is like. If it's one each with 10, 15 to go, they'll push for the winner. So I, I think St Mern will beat them. I think they'll beat them 2-1 as well. Yeah, Morris? I fancy Hamilton. Um, I don't see it being pretty. I think it'll be, yeah, by one goal. I think, I, I, I find, I think it'll be... I think I need to go to be rough it on this one again. I think it'll be two one Hamilton. Yep. Okay. That's great. Good difference of opinion there. Um, uh, certainly not for the faint-hearted tomorrow. There, Livingston against Hibs. Just to give you an insight, Morris. It's very rare that Tam, who occasionally now ghosts for Hibs TV, it's very rare <laughs> that he predicts anything other than a than a Hibs win. So, is it tomorrow, Tam? Livingston against Hibs. No, I don't think so. I've got to go with Hibs again. Um, they, they got obviously get back on track last week. Massive result at Ross County. You know, after going a goal down, uh, I, I think they'll beat Livingston there early in the season, 4-1. I think they'll go there uh, on, tomorrow and, and I think they'll win the game. I think I've put down 2-1 to Hibs. And I think with, with Kevin Nisbet back in the score sheet, he will get such a boost of confidence from scoring and from being in the Scotland squad. So I think... I think I think Hibs have just got a little bit more quality in the final third with Boyle and this, but so I'm going to go for two one to Hibs. Yeah, David Martindale, the Livingston boss, clearly realises the danger of Nisbet. I think Jack's done a very good job with Hibs. They've got very you go. You've got Nisbet coming back into the fold. He's been called up to Scotland, so I think they're a really well organised team and they're third in the league for a reason. So it's going to be extremely difficult to take anything from the game. What's your thoughts, Morris, on Nesbitt? I think he's 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 a very good SPL striker. Um, I think in time he will get his wee chance down south at, at the championship. I think that's that's that will be his highest level. I think the championship's a good player, good young lad, and it's nice to see you know when 
he's going through the gears. He starts at Dunfermline, and comes to Hibs, and there's talk about him going down to England. So no, I think he's a, he's a, he's a good player. Um, he can do most things. He can finish. He's good in the air, run. He can hold it in. Um, so coming to tomorrow, it depends what Hibs turn up. If Hibs front players turn up, they'll be, they'll be too much for Livingston. However, that that surface is a leveler, so I, I would go. I'm going to go for a one-one draw there. Yeah. Um, as far as the game's concerned, Jack Ross um, reckons Nisbet called up for Scotland is certainly an example to others who might have suffered being written off in their career. The only danger with that is you can be written off at an early age, um, and also to be able to respond to rejection um, or perceived failure is not an easy one. So that's the challenge that young players have. It's not just an ability; it's that um, psychological challenge overcoming that disappointment. So. Those players you mentioned, the examples of that, Ken's another one. Yeah, I'm going to go Livy 1, Hibs 2, Ruffy. Yeah, I think we've all went Livy uh, 1, Hibs 2. Uh, I think uh, Nisbet will score. Uh, I think getting included in the Scotland squad will be a tremendous lift to him after the disappointment and not getting his move, uh, which will come, uh, obviously. But I, I think Boyle... Uh, is a match winner as well. So too many match winners for me with Hibs, so I'm going to go Hibs 2-1. OK, um, so Morris only one predicting a draw on that one. It's perhaps an indication of um, maybe how not not so much poor a season it's been for both sides. There will be varying degrees of assessment. I mean, Mickey Mellon just thinks Dundee United staying in the league has been a, a, you know, a, a good success for them as they try and build on what they achieved last season, staying in the Premier League. Who knows? But Dundee United against Aberdeen is not one of those games at the moment that you're eagerly anticipating. We've got a chance at Dundee United sitting eighth at the moment with a chance to go level on points with St Mirren um, with a win. But um, they certainly won't get into the top six. Um, how do you view this one, Tom? I don't think it's going to be a great game, Peter. Um, I, personally, if I was a Dundee United supporter, I'd be a little bit disappointed at the way the performed this season in the league position that they're in but when you consider the players they've got I think when you consider the budget they've got I think they should have been pushing into the top six I think they've got a lot of international players they're good young players so I think that Mickey Mellon has been very cagey and in, in, in saying that he just wanted to keep the club up I think he's obviously done that I think Aberdeen are not playing well at the minute either they're struggling for confidence so I think like one goal in nine games which has never been heard of for an Aberdeen team so I think this is going to be eye bleeding and I think it's, I was going to go nil nil, but I'm going to go one each. Uh, just, just so people will actually watch the game. I'm going to go one each. Well, I was, I'm, I'm with you, Tom. I'm going one each. And Morris isn't aware of the fact that Tom has a 50 foot um, satellite dish on his roof and he's able to just wind it round to whatever game he wants to watch, Morris. Uh, so clearly it will not be heading up to Tanadice for Dundee United no. against Aberdeen. What's your take on it, Morris? Um, I think Mickey Mellon's been very cute there. Uh, Dunya United's budget is is uh, is tasty, and I think um, t- for him to to say that they were just hoping to stay in the league, I don't believe that for a second. Um, Lauren Shanklin on front, come on. Um, so uh, listen, I think Aberdeen will turn Dunya United over tomorrow. I think um, Paul Sheeran and Barry Robson are coming in. Probably a wee bit fresh ideas. They'll get a wee bounce from that, I think. Um, and I think I'm going to go 2 0 in Aberdeen. Oh, right. Ruffy? Uh, I think Aberdeen's still got a lot to play for. I think, still think they'll catch Hibs. They'll think they can catch Hibs. Obviously, they'll think Hibs will slip up somewhere and uh, the gap will close. And then obviously the split will come. They've still got a chance to get that third place. And that third place uh, is quite a lot of money in the Premiership if you if you can grab it. So I'm going to go for Aberdeen to win 2-1. Yeah, Kelly against your old side, Motherwell, uh, Morris. Uh, Kelly in big trouble. I don't think anyone envisaged them being in as dire straits as they are at the moment. Bottom of the league, one point behind Hamilton Ackies. And against Motherwell, a changing Motherwell under Graham Alexander. Yeah, um, since 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 Grez has come in, um, the, the, the front three have been performing quite well. Um, he's changed it around a bit with, with, with Jordan coming in. Um, when I was, I was down there the last time in Motherwell, I think hijacked the three points. I think Kelly played very well that night and, and come on, we're unlucky, if we're being honest. 
for the sake of Scottish football, I would like to see Kamarnock remain in the Premier League. I think they're, they're a good club, uh, run by good people. And with that in mind, I, th- I still think Motherwell will have too much for him tomorrow. But for this, again, for the sake of Scottish football, I would like to see Kamarnock uh, take some points tomorrow and kind of remain with, with Premier League status. Yeah, OK. Um, uh, I think Morris is predicting too many draws, Ruffy. This could, if they all come up, Morris will be talking to us <laughs> from Barbados yeah, next I week. <laughs> <laughs> just, about, just, about, just quick, note these down, Ruffy. We could be in for a few quid here. Um, I've, gone for, um, I've gone for Motherwell just to edge it by a goal to nil, Ruffy. Prediction? Uh, same as me. Uh, one nothing. I think the pressure's on Kilmarnock. Uh, They'll obviously be looking at uh, results round about them, but uh, they really need to, as Maud has said, they really need to get some kind of points. But I don't think it'll be tomorrow. I'm going to go mother with 1 0. Tom? I'm going to go for Commandment to win 1 0. I think that um, I think Tommy Wright will have a will have them set up defensively stronger than they were at Ross County. They were very, very poor. I, I just think the signing of Kyle Lafferty could be the difference between them staying in the division. I think that he's came in, he's hungry. You know, I know myself as a striker, when you come in, you're on a short-term contract. You know, your target is to, to play well and get a longer-term deal or get m- more money. And I think that getting Kyle on that kind of short leash where you're getting him, you know you know he's got to play well to get another contract. And I think he showed so far up there. He scored a few goals at Kilmarnock. And I think he might grab the winner. I think he'll be the difference uh, between the teams. I, I'm going to go for Kilmarnock to, to just sneak a, a 1-0. OK, St. Johnson, I've got one nothing to win but not make it into the top six, Tam. I think I've went for one nothing as well, Peter. I think I should have went the same same predictions here. Are we just yeah, that yeah. Kybosh Ruffy in this in this? Absolutely, uh, game? absolutely. Uh, what Mo what Mo doesn't realise <laughs> is the the loser the loser takes the other two out for an all expenses paid meal with the most expensive bottle of red wine on the menu, Morris. So you can see why Tam and, and Ruffy last suddenly... the minute. I've already picked a restaurant in East Bride for the top red wines of five. <laughs> Sorry, my up here. <laughs> oh, you're going to get, you'll be getting battered the next day you're up at the baller up hall, Ruffy. Um, anyway, what did you go for? Uh, I went for Sir Johnson to win two uh, one. Uh, I know Ross County will be fighting for everything, but I think Sir Johnson are on form just now. And I know you keep saying if Sir Johnson win, uh, I think if Sir Johnson win by one goal and Sir Mirren draw, both of them have got the same goal difference. So I don't yeah. know how that works. Yeah, I think St Mirren will occupy the top six space. I think they'll look at their head-to-heads in this situation. I might be wrong, but I think that's how they'll determine it over the course of it. And they'll look at wins and goals for, and of course, um, I think all that comes into St Johnson win by two goals. Uh, shut up, I haven't quite worked that out yet. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see, I think. I think a draw. I think a draw is good enough for St Mirren. Morris, what prediction are you going for? I'm going to go to nothing for St Johnston. Okay. Um, listen, just before we just before we go, I've got to talk about. I mean, there's FA Cup quarterfinals uh, this weekend. Um, Leicester against Man United, certainly, and Everton, Man City, uh, two absolute crackers. There are indeed uh, some uh, English Premier League fixtures as well. But just before we go, uh, Champions League. It's now Man City against Dortmund, Porto, Chelsea, Bayern Munich against Paris Saint Germain, and Real Madrid against Liverpool. Look at that. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, Cracking ties. Uh, And again, probably, if you're being honest about it, you know, Porto, um, to a lesser extent Dortmund, but Porto in there um, breaks what we call that big stranglehold time that the super clubs have on this Champions League nowadays. Yeah, it'd be nice to see a club like that going into the semi-finals and maybe even getting to the final. But, you know, I, I did fancy Man City, but they have got the hardest possible draw. You know, they've got to play Dortmund with Haaland, who's on fire at the minute. And then they'll play the winners of PSG against Bayern Munich. And that's before they even get to the final. So I think when you look at clubs like Liverpool uh, or Chelsea, they'll, they'll really, really fancy getting to the to the final. When you look at the draw they've got, they've managed to avoid Man City and Bayern Munich. So I think the draw has been very kind. And you've got a wee sneaky feeling maybe for, for a Chelsea now uh, to get to the final. Yeah, and sadly, Ruffy, your team, Paris Saint-Germain, will be pumped out at this uh, this, this quarter-final stage, Ruffy. They've come up against not Bayern Munich, so it's all over. It's all over. For no, me, not for sure, me, Ruffy. no, man. I think no? my, front three will, 
my front three will sort them out. Uh, but uh, it just shows you, you know, that when you see these ties and there's no supporters in the stadium, it's an absolute tragedy. You know, the, 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 every one of these stadiums would be absolutely bouncing uh, with the ties that have come out there. And uh, it's just unfortunate. But uh, the longer it goes, we might get it for the final. Yeah, Morris, who are you picking to win the Champions League? Never mind the quarter-final draw. Mm, it's it's a toss-up. I think I would love to see Man City do it, um, but they've, they've certainly got a tough run in for that one. Um, it's just when you look at that draw, it's just sexy. It's just nice in it. It's just that's what it should look like every at the end of every competition. It's just nice teams, football and outfits. If I had a gun to my head, because of the draw, I think Chelsea. Yeah, there you are. Um, we get a prediction they, on that. A couple of, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've gone for Man City to win it. Uh, Tom, who have you got? I fancy Man City, but looking at the draw, yeah. you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with Memorial with, with Chelsea. I think they've got a, a very, very good chance of getting to the final, at least. I don't think, I don't think your eyes will be bleeding with any of their games. <laughs> no, no, exactly. No. I think uh, that's not we'll United. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we'll certainly be tuning into it. That's an absolute stonewall certainty. Uh, listen, a couple of things just before we go. Uh, first and foremost, if you'd like to win yourself an iPad, an Xbox, and a Diego Maradona canvas, go onto our Facebook page and right at the top, it's an easy to enter qu uh, competition. Uh, a simple question, follow the instructions straight through, register your details. We'll announce the winner at the end of this month. Join us if you can on Sunday half past ten. We're live uh, outside Celtic Park ahead of Celtic against Rangers, the third instalment of the Old Firm Derby this season. Uh, thank you for everyone for their predictions and of course the support of uh, Glenn Kamara which is always nice to see. Uh, let's hope there is um, a resolution to this and of course um, at the end of it UEFA take a strong stance on anyone guilty of uh, racist abuse. Um, certainly it's something we preach on this programme on a regular basis. Last word, um, I think everybody in the football show delighted to see you, Morris. Hopefully it won't be the last time that you um, come on the show and, and maybe get a few strips behind you. We'll, we'll be happy. We'd be happy with uh, Michael Ballack. You'll have a few better you. ones than um, absolutely, we'd be happy with Michael Ballack. Uh, Mo, I hope you get back into uh, coaching in some capacity. You've got too much experience not to be involved in the game. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, we certainly enjoyed your company. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Morris Ross, Alan Ruff, Tam McManus, myself, Peter Martin. To all of you, thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed.